Hello everybody, it's your boy, the biggest and baddest man in all of KBW, the Bulldozer. And welcome back to KBW Reunion Podcast Episode 10. Wow, boys, we're already uh, 10 episodes into this thing. You know, that's crazy. Uh, before we get into discussion, go ahead and introduce yourself, fellas. I'm the Assassin, AK-47, and I am who I am, and I'm different from everybody else. So sorry if I'm, uh, you know... My throat's scratchy. I'm a little bit under the weather tonight, tonight, guys. I'm trying my best to do this pod and do the reacts and everything, but I'm not feeling 100%, but I'm here. I'm glad to be here. Of course, I didn't want to miss it, but uh, I am a little bit under the weather, but I'm here, and I am who I am, and I'm different from everybody else. And I am the best at what I do, Mr. Better Than You, Cage, also known as Fuego. Del Sol, and it is an absolute pleasure to be 10 episodes deep with two of my best friends in the Bulldozer, a.k.a. Dustin, and my guy, a.k.a. 47, and who's still here with us, even though he's feeling under the weather this week, he could not miss this edition of the KBW Podcast. Remember, the KBW Podcast is brought to you by the KBW membership. Yes. Four different tiers with <clears throat> different levels of perks through with each tier, starting at 99 cents. All the way up to nineteen ninety nine, and if you're at that highest tier where you get unseen KBW footage, unseen KBW matches at least once a month, then that makes you the KBW difference maker and executive producer of the podcast, which gets you a shout out right here at the beginning. So let me go ahead and shout out all of our KBW executive producers, our KBW difference makers, DJ Murder, Killer Kokami, Rensler the Chosen One, Jax Alice, Jax Allen, Leviathan King. Berto32, The One-Eyed God, and Ash Crimson. Hell All yeah. of you being difference makers, we appreciate you so much. Thank you for helping making this podcast happen. Now for Thank you. Absolutely. Now for all the other KBW members in the lower tiers, there will be a shout-out in, in the credits at the end of the video. Everybody who is a member will get shouted out. And if you want to help us and become a member and get KBW podcast episodes early and get KBW react episodes early and get your KBW podcast questions answered live on the show like so many people asked already that are members that we will answer today on the show all you got to do is join the KBW membership remember we don't get any money from our old videos anymore and so to keep producing this podcast and putting all this time effort and energy into it it is extremely appreciated if you can help us uh, if you have a couple bucks to throw our way. But if you don't, no big deal. You'll get the podcast every Tuesday for free. They react every Friday. And periodically, we're going to be re-uploading a bunch of videos that got deleted off the channel, including including the uh, Royal Rumble 2, uh, Royal Rumble 1, including the Fatal 4 that you guys saw that we re-uploaded last week. And a bunch more rolling out very soon. But this week, the big topic of the podcast is none other than our esteemed co-host. Ooh. The Bull Dozer. Dustin, you know, we talked about this a couple weeks ago. You, you, we have a group chat on the phone. You were throwing out ideas, and you're like, hey, we really never really discussed my career as the Bull Dozer. And in KBW Podcast Episode 2, we revealed who Hazard was, and we revealed who Bamba Kid was, and we kind of went over Bamba Kid's career and touched a lot on yours and the Bamba Kid's rivalry. And I guess it kind of blew my mind that we really haven't really discussed the ins and outs. We've kind of talked about it with that episode. We kind of talked about it with the Story of Execution episode. But to really dive into who the man behind the Bulldozer character is, we wanted to do that, as well as ask a bunch of answer a bunch of questions that the fans had at the end of the pod. Uh, but what do you think? What is is there anything prior to KBW that the fans need to know about you and what you are, uh, what shaped your childhood, who you are as a wrestling fan? Oh, man, I mean, you know, and, and a lot of this, we're going to touch on some things we touched in, in previous pods, but, you know, I want to say I, I've, I've been a wrestling fan my whole life um, since for as long as I can remember. I, man, I had every WWE video game. I had the old WCW video game. I remember watching uh, with my dad, Attitude Era, uh, growing up, watching me and AK and even you, Cage, when I saw you in school talking about everything going on uh huge Shawn michaels fan love the man to death and and like i said when you presented me with the opportunity to join 
I just immediately was like, I'm in. I I, I want to do it because I just love wrestling. That just brought back a memory when you said you had the old WCW and WO Revenge game. I remember coming to your house as a kid, back before we were really tight, back before any of this KVW stuff ever even was thought of. I come to your house, I don't know if it was just for a day, if I stayed the night with you for a sleepover, but I remember specifically playing WCW and WO Revenge at your house on the Nintendo 64. And I just remember thinking how cool it was that you had this game and I got to play it as much as I loved wrestling the same time that you loved wrestling. I don't remember if you remember that, but I definitely remember that. I just can't remember if it was just hanging out for a little bit of time or staying the night with you. I think I, I uh, stayed over, but it's yeah, that yeah, far I, back I, that I don't even remember. I definitely <clears throat> think I remember because I used to have the old Nintendo 64 set up in uh, my brother's room back there with the bunk. Yeah, band. back in the back yeah, room. Yeah, it wasn't yeah, at your room. Yeah, yeah man, I remember yeah, that. And, uh, Bed up I mean, against I, the wall. Yep. I might get some hate for this, but I like that game better than uh, WrestleMania 2000. I think a lot of people love that game, but I was a big, big fan of the WCW game. I think the only one that comes close to that one is No Mercy. No Mercy. Everybody right. loves No Mercy even more than WrestleMania 2000, but both of them really good. Um, but yeah, man, I just remember... Like there wasn't you, me and you went to the same church. You know, we had relatives that went to the same church, and when I rem- I remember us in Sunday school because my grandmother taught our Sunday school class that I learned that you were a wrestling fan for the first time, and I remember, oh my God, I got somebody I could talk about wrestling with, just much like the Beast and Pac Man. They were a part of my Sunday school, went to my church as well. We all had that bonded connection, but they stayed in my church for a little bit longer. Where you stopped coming to that church for a little bit of time. And it wasn't until we got a little bit older and was in the same school that we talked more about wrestling with each other. And i tell you how, we, what I loved about talking wrestling with you. You know, I love talking about it with AK and, and other people when they would, but you were the only other person I knew that loved Shawn Michaels as much as me. Like, mm-hmm. he was your favorite. He was my favorite. You know, I felt like he, he was very underappreciated, and we just, you know, we both loved him. Oh my goodness! Yeah, because we we even discussed this a little bit before the podcast. Like Sean in that second run didn't win the world title much. He didn't have titles much. He was losing a lot. It seemed like right there was like, but we loved him and like we loved DX. Oh my god, oh. the DX reunion <laughs> in two thousand seven still gives me like. Life, bro. Like yes, they teased yes. it for like a year straight. Like you see, Triple H hit the suck it, and then you see John Michaels, and you're like, "Are right, DX gonna get back together? They're both good guys now." And then we had the whole weird Spirit Squad feud to take out Sean, and then you know DX gets back together. Right? right There's I still got... some giddy kid in you, right? When you yes. think about. Oh man, I go back and watch some of those old bits all the time. I, I freaking... Even so much so that yeah. I just remember this: we were on the same little league baseball team, right? As that all is going on, right? You were still playing sports at that time, and we would. Hit the DX crotch shop. We were the, the Chicago Cubs. So we were the Cubs. Yes. And we yes. were watching wrestling at that. My goodness. So many <laughs> memories are flooding back. Oh, this is what yeah. we had to be, I don't know, probably not eight or not ten. Maybe at most ten or eleven at most right there. We hadn't yet hit middle school or high school yet when we were still playing Little League Baseball. That's crazy. Yeah. Oh, dude, I, I got a funny story. I, I remember I got my parents to get me the, uh, the DX hoodie. The, the WWE shop had come out. I do remember that. They had them do doing the that. chop shot. I think I still got it. But, the crotch shot. Uh, yeah. The crotch shot. But on the back, they were sh- mooning. And I, uh-huh. I, I stuck it at Ward to school one day. And I got in trouble. They were like, oh he cannot wear this. <laughs> he cannot <laughs> wear this back to school. That's oh, so man. funny. My dad one time come and picked me up from school early. But he used to have a shirt with a can on it. That was open. That it said, "Open up a can of whoop ass," <laughs> right? And uh, he come in. And he he come and picked up from school. Didn't realize he had it on. And one of the principal or somebody was like, "Why are you wearing that?" And he's like, "Oh my god!" I'm so, like, even he felt bad for wearing this out of school. So it's funny that you got in trouble <laughs> for wearing it. the ass is showing on the back where they're moving. It's a classic DX thing. Whip out the ass, man. Teachers and principals, bro. They are. They have to be the most sensitive people I ever in my life. Uh. I get it, though. They're worried about their job. But all it takes is one kid to go home and say this or that. Mm-hmm. What they said let's be school. honest. Let's be honest. We were all doing the cross shots back in the day. No doubt. Dude, DX was definitely <laughs> bad. on. Like, There's jokes that I didn't even understand until I got older that they yes. were doing that you were like, oh, my God. Oh my God. Right? The bit with, I, with... I didn't know what it meant to say suck it. I just thought that was the cool catchphrase, right? Like, I remember I say this bunch a bunch. Carlito had a T-shirt 
where it said, do you spit or swallow? Where he had, because the, the apple. And I just thought it was about the apple. Like, I specifically remember Tori Wilson coming up and answering the question in his ear. And like, they become a thing on television. But I had no clue, no clue what spit or swallow meant. I just thought it was about the apple. The double entendre was crazy. Still don't, still don't know what it means either. The double entendre. <laughs> <laughs> No, the bit, the bit with uh, I don't know if you remember with Triple H and Sean. Uh, oh yeah, the, with the, the talk <laughs> about Vince girls. loving cock or dick. No, 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 no. I'm talking with the girls. Oh yes, with, where it's just Triple H, it's, it's Triple H and, and a girl talking to each other, and they both have like a ketchup and mustard thing. Where they, Sean, uh, who's born again Christian at this time, he's like Triple H, like, hey, go get the hot dog buns <laughs> over there. And Sean runs away, and then during this, like, you just see them talking to each other, and they're like. Uh, 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 and they start squeezing the ketchup and mustard bottles. And then out of nowhere, two girls raise up from under the thing, yeah. wiping their mouths. Oh my and, you had, and like, I had no clue what that meant back in the day. I was like, oh, you know, just a young 12, 11. I was probably 12 at that point. 2007, I'm 12 years old. Still had no clue about the birds and the bees in that sense and what was going on. That was uh, so funny. But it's very funny. That we definitely loved Sean and DX. I know it took us on a little tangent. No doubt. Yeah. Um, one of my favorite uh, Sean uh, backstage bits when he uh, when he super kicked the was like the little girl backstage. I remember. Oh yeah, when, like he got hurt and and or lost his smile again, and Triple H had to go get him. He was cooking. Yeah, in the kitchen. And they were like, yeah. this little girl was like, I need my da da da. You know what yeah. I'm saying? <laughs> and he like uh, kicks. He super kicks. And him. the food goes everywhere. Oh, no. <laughs> That reminds me of the, the bit where he goes when Sean goes on his tangent with the super kicks where he's like, Oh What's yeah, he's kicks Steve. <laughs> Steve. Why I just super kicked Steve or whatever his name was. Which ended up being Sean Spears. Yeah. Later on. Ten. Ten ten. Yeah. Ty Dillinger. Yeah, never speaking of the tenth episode. Absolutely. Tenth episode. Ten. Get a little call back there. And you know, and then we talked about this a little bit, but I remember you were you, you said you were low key pumped the first time I asked you to come over to do KW. Oh God, I was so excited. Like I said, I had, you know, I don't know if you believe in it, but I, honestly, I I had watched um, episodes, and I was just like, because I don't know if AK had, because like I said, me and AK, you know, we were in the same grade, yeah. and so we saw a lot of each other in classes and stuff. And I think maybe he was telling me about it, and I and I watched, and I was like, man, that's just so awesome. That's so cool. <laughs> And like I said, when I was finally able to drive and go pick people up, you were the first one. I was like, okay, we got to get. Because he loves wrestling. So he'll he'll be down to do it. And we need people that want to do it. Yeah. And like that became the three. We became the three guys that cared about KBW the most. Because we actually watched wrestling and liked wrestling the most. Um, but again, I started you off so slow. It was like tag matches, quick matches. But the first match... Which again got took off the channel, and unfortunately we don't have the the original footage anymore. But is you flipping the trampoline over onto Family Kid for the first time in your debut match? Really cool thing. Yeah. And I remember you said in one podcast it was like you thought this was gonna be a finisher for every match. I was like no no no, yeah. you're gonna <laughs> save for special occasions. Yeah. Um, and I think it paid off at the end, you know, not using it because it would have gone oversaturated every match. But you knew like oh my god, those are just. Tr- Dump the trampoline over. It was something crazy. Absolutely. Absolutely. I wanted to prove that we had a monster. Like, I wanted to make you our monster, man. And, like, you were the biggest guy of, out of all of us, you know, until really, like, Paul Wall came along or until, like, Pitbull and, and the Great Dane came along, which came in much later, right? That's two seasons later, mm-hmm. really, before they come back. And Paul wasn't as big then as he, as he was when he came back, you know? Um, and so, like, you were my guy in a sense. I was like, okay. We got to come up with a storyline for this guy. And the first storyline, put you with AK, let you do these little matches before we turn on AK. And we form execution, a group I knew I wanted to start that I hadn't started yet. And like that became, I think, is us an execution. And um, you know, I think I think that kind of pivots around. I don't know if that's what you think about, but I think that's what I thought about when you wanted to form the execution was kind of like, DX. I get my absolutely. own DX. I get my own absolutely. DX. You know, like, it's, it's, it's yeah. crazy. I mean, even DX is like, they do the yeah. X like this up in the air. We do X here. Execution. I just thought it was cool. But, like, again, it goes back to my love for DX. Um, and. and yeah. Go ahead. Oh, no. I was just going to say, I don't know if you're going to pivot around this just thinking about it, though. 
like you said, you kind of started me off slow, and I think it was more like just kind of getting me into the rhythm, you know, seeing what I could do, test me out. But a big thing I appreciate uh, to me personally, you know, you didn't just try to use me as your typical big man, you know, because that's a gripe I always have personally with the big men. Like, I respect them, I love them, but they're just kind of these just slow, you know, big uh, guys do these kind one of dimensional. Same moves. Right, one dimensional. And, but you, like I said before, you know, you really push, push the limits of everybody. That's including me. And it goes back to like when you, what was it? Money in the bank. When I ran off and dove on everybody, you don't see big guys do that much. Like, I mean, that's crazy. And then especially, but if I can you know, recall correctly, I think you suggested it. Maybe you I did. Have, Maybe you have. did it as a joke. And it was like, then I dive. And I'm like, you know what? <laughs> Let's do that. <laughs> and that's another thing. Right? I, I joke a lot. And I you always to... joked, but then I, you learned that I'm going to, if I think it's possible, I'm like, hold on. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, that, but... and I think that's the match that put you on the map. That's literally for me, it opened my eyes. Like, there was so much shit in that Money in the Bank match that meant, I was like, oh, Bulldozer can actually be a main event guy. Like, yeah. you had a good match with AK, but uh, before that, right? Mm hmm. Yeah, because you'd already lost the belt at this time. Right. But I don't, even in those two AK matches, the Aquit match and the singles match, again, I thought AK was carrying you in a way, and I had to plan it where, you know, <laughs> AK can make you look good. But AK, again, doesn't take as many crazy bumps as like a Bama kid can take. But then in that match, right, you do so many things. The dive is crazy. The You flip the trampoline at the end. Uh you land on your neck, and it proved how tough you were, right? And I was just like, oh. Sh and then you cut the promo in, in your entrance. So just so many things I felt like was clicking. I was like, oh, okay. Not only do I got Pac-Man and the Beast now joining the fray, I got a big man that I was like, dang, maybe we should have kept the, kept, the, kept, kept the belt on you with how good it was, right? Yeah. Immediately, we had you wrestle D-Man where I had you cut another promo. Like, that's the match after is you versus D-Man for the briefcase, no, the, the actual DQ zone. But I had you cut another promo. I was like, okay, his promos are getting better. We need to have more promos with how good it was. You were yeah, finding I mean, I, yourself. I was, I was, and I and, uh, and you know if you go back and watch the videos, you can you can tell. And I think it's with all of us, we get better. And it kind of goes like the AK with uh, his promos. If you go back, especially after he turned heel, they got in my opinion so much better. Like he just was really really into it. And I think I was kind of the same way the further we went along. I love trying to come up with promos and, and us just scheming, like, stuff to say. And, um, again, you know, not to pivot too much, but that was one of my favorite things about KBW was just the nights or the days that we weren't recording, that it was just me, you, and AK, and we were just brainstorming and, mm -hmm. and thinking of promos and thinking of matches. And it's just, you know, it. I mean, it made... Two of my best friends, really. I mean, I, I, I can't accredit our friendship without KBW. Um, oh, without think, a doubt. I think we were always friends, but it just made us the best of friends. No doubt. Well, same thing with me and AK. I don't think me and AK ever become as close if KBW doesn't happen. It's like, I wish we had more of those brainstorm sessions. Because me and AK, that's all we did. Like, literally, from the time I turned 16 years old, me and AK were together every day. We were every inseparable day. until the time I left to move to college in Oklahoma. It was rare. It was so rare. If I wasn't with my girlfriend at that time, I was with AK. And it's like, and a lot of times AK would be with me, with my girl. Like yeah. he just he didn't mind third wheeling, and it's it was just weird. Was like he was with me every day, and me and him got to brainstorm a lot. And I wish we could even have done it more with you because I do think collectively we have such a good time together. Um, even now, 10 years later, we get together and brainstorm about this podcast, yeah. and, like, it's so much fun. Like, we do an hour, hour, 15-minute podcast, the camera ends, then we talk for another hour and a half just because we like talking to each other. And, like, that's the reason I do want to start a separate podcast where we talk about real life and just things oh, we man. like. And I, and if you guys would like that, please yeah. let us know in the comments yeah. below man, but that you would listen start to a us game podcast. in a separate That'd be awesome. Absolutely, yeah. man. I can see us branching out and doing more because eventually we're going to run out of things to talk about when it comes to KBW. However, us as friends could talk forever. We do right. absolutely put it on a different channel. We wouldn't oversaturate this channel or cross, you know, pollinate or anything of that nature. But we definitely have been thinking about starting our own separate podcast just for the people that do seem interested in our, our, uh, you know, our 
friendship and like how well we talk together and how good of a rapport we have with each other. So definitely just something to think about. But back to that at hand is like, again, it seemed like the more confident you got in yourself and you gained in yourself, the more I was confident in letting you run and go, you know, because all the booking KBW was done by me and a little bit with AK, you know, discussing back and forth. But, uh, you know, I we needed people that could call matches and that could have main event matches and big matches. And I, I, you know, there's a question that we'll talk about later about I, there's like singles matches that Bulldozer never had that he should have had, right? Yeah. We should have done more singles with Bulldozer. I just didn't. It wasn't even that I didn't trust you to call it. It's just I didn't trust other people to make you look as good as me and AK can make you look, really. It's like people get scared of a big man. Some people don't want to take the splash. Some people don't want to take some of these moves, right? <laughs> it's like you're limited because of how big in stature you were. It's like, you know, some people were intimidated by you. Or it's like we never had a follow-up to the Beast knocking you off the trampoline. There should have been a Bulldozer versus Beast singles match. However, it just seemed like... Even to this day, big man versus big man matches are yeah. not fun unless yeah, they're, they're super they're athletic, not. right? They're yeah. not fun to watch. And you know, it, yeah. you're gonna have that same shoulder tackle spot that you see mm. in every. You're gonna you tackle me, I'm not gonna go down. I tackle you, you're not gonna mm. go down. And it would have been they something like too. that, especially with my mind at that time. I would have done all the same normal yeah. big man spots. And it's funny because that match. it was a big man uh, versus big man match in any match, uh, any show I was at last. Um, last Saturday and they did that exact spot with the shoulder. <laughs> so it's still, it's it still happens, happens in every yeah. match. Every time. Um, but it, and I'm, I'm jumping ahead here and we'll, it, it was like that until we got a big man like Paul wall. Yeah. That mm-hmm. could, but I won't jump ahead. It's like, but like there's, there's a question I'll say for the end of the podcast about any singles matches that we never did that we should have done. It should have like, been a, that's one thing I regret. Should have been a pit bull and dozer. Yeah, that's, that's what I'm saying. I'm gonna talk about all <laughs> that here in a little bit. But like, bull dozer is lacking a lot of singles matches that we definitely should have gotten in. Yeah. However, one singles match that he did not lack was him versus the Bama Kid, career oh, versus no. streak. No, like I said, uh, Bama Kid definitely probably my favorite rivalry. Um, and again, uh, go go back to pod episode two if you don't know. Cage was Bama kid, yeah. But it was with us being an execution, it was hard for us to go against one another. And so, how did we solve it? We put me against Bama kid, and and he just bought out the best in me, man. I mean, I pride versus- myself. I pride myself on making people look good, right? Like you oh, look yeah. at the oh, yeah. runaway train from the Beast. I make it look crazy, right? I'm not scared to take bumps on the ground, right? I would get thrown on the ground a ton. Right, I prided myself on taking as many big moves as possible, and that only lent to your strengths, right? Because I can make you look like the monster that I wanted you to be. Where other people might have been scared of that or didn't do that, I knew I could make him look like the beat, like the bulldozer that he is, you know. And so I think that's why. I, but again, we were slowly both finding our own confidence and how good we were getting. So that that. Career versus streak match is kind of a testament to that. Of like, this is the hardest match you're going to have because it's the most I'm going to push you. We're going to do some unique things. We're going to do some different things. It's at a different location. And like, it really just came together in a beautiful way. It did. It did. And uh, how many matches did we have? Three? What, yeah, if you count the first one, yeah, you count the first one, your debut, which was just yeah. a quick squash match where you flipped the trampoline on me. And you know, we have career versus streak. Yeah, I mean, I know you said it was a squash match, but I mean, just compare that match to those other two matches. It's just it's incredible. insane the difference. I, I, I wish we had the footage to w- actually watch it. Yeah. And then, because uh, at that time, Bama Kid was still a jobber, because that's the point of him. Like, I created Bama Kid to lose. But then he got so right. over mm-hmm. that, you know, we had to have him win, unless that's the story. Yeah. That's the story. We got to give the guy who's never been legitimately pinned arguably, the bulldozer versus the guy who, if he doesn't win this match, he must unmask and, you know, give up his career in KBW. And I think it made for a great story and made for an even better match because, again, I pushed you so hard in that match to do more stuff that you hadn't done before. You took yeah. more moves than you ever took in any other yeah. match. I, I yeah. gave you so many moves in that match. I was so exhausted, too. You can see the video. I mean, uh, we're going to do a react to it, but I was exhausted. <laughs> Probably most I had been so far up to that point. <laughs> 
Um, you know, you have two matches with AK that I think are good, mm-hmm. but I don't think they're great. You know, the first one is uh, the title match where his foot lands on the rope. The second one is the I quit match where you don't want to get awesome knockout it, so you say I quit. Mm-hmm. Both good matches, but I think the Cage versus AK rivalry at the time overshadowed any type of rivalry you really had with the Bo- AK and Bulldozer, right? I don't think there was, like, you know, well, luckily we got to have our triple threat match later on in KBW, but again, the late era of KBW, we didn't have a chance. Like, there should have been a Bulldozer versus AK long match. There should have been a, like, we had a Christmas Day special, but there should have been a Cage versus Bulldozer yeah. proper long match after the KBW, uh, after you turned on the, you know, execution disbanded. I think there was a lot of moving parts at that time yeah. when we knew we were trying to get to the triple threat match. So, well, I definitely, uh, you know, kind of regret not having a longer rivalry with AK and and even really having a longer rivalry with you, especially after ex- execution broke up. But again, I think it opened up the opportunity for like me and Paul Wall, which. Yeah. You know, it was just it was a good pivot opinion. because we knew me and AK knew we were gonna do the one year singles match reunion that we hadn't we haven't touched each other in the singles match for a whole year right. at Blood Thirsty Two. We need to do that leather strap match, so we have to get Bulldozer out of the equation. Who's the perfect person to come in to pivot Bulldozer away from this title for a minute? None other than the returning Paul Wall. You know, but as soon as Paul Wall came back, I eventually got a win on him to get the number one contendership for AK. Uh, me and Paul had a really good match. I haven't watched back yet, so I don't yeah. even know how good it was. I know it just got really dark that night. And so who knows, like, man? Yeah, who knows? Late. Maybe we have Paul Wall as a guest sometime soon. Oh, yeah. We, we got to hear Paul. We got to. It's all up to Bulldozer. He's got to talk oh, him yeah. into oh, yeah. to doing I think, it. I think we can definitely get Paul on, um, you know. Uh, and I think a lot of a great rivalry kind of like goes to good chemistry, right? Y'all had so, great chemistry. And, and just me and Paul had great chemistry. I mean, uh, Especially for, and I know he's not in the, a big man in the sense of how I'm a big man, but you know, I, I just think we we well went blended so well together. Uh, well, I think, I, real quick before we jump into that Paul Wall match, I do want to say, I love our fucking triple threat match at, oh, at, yeah, at, yeah. at Blood oh, Sweat Tears. Right? We haven't been touching on that because we do want to do a whole episode on that. It's coming very soon. We've had guests the past couple weeks, so that slowed things down. But we're going to do a whole podcast episode on that match. We're going to react to it first and then come back and talk about it. Because I think the promos at that time to build it up, the whole story of KBW for the past, since Royal Rumble 1 to that moment, had all built up to that point, yeah. really. And that's something we will talk about. And I love that match, but we are going to deep dive into that. But again, then the pivot to Paul Wall coming in at that time. Paul Wall had gotten so jacked, you know, his, 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 he was he was a big dude, right? He done hit puberty, he done come into his own, I, you know, I we were on the same football team together, so I saw how much weight he was putting up in the gym, and I was just like, I knew he still liked wrestling, it's just he had a strict parent at the time that wouldn't let him come, but when we finally was able to get him to come over to do KBW again, that's immediately in my mind, I was like, oh shit, can he pick up the bulldozer? Can he Paul Wall bomb the bulldozer? Like, if we have, like, these two freaking giant behemoth men go at each other. I still love that match. Maybe my favorite match that I'm not involved in in all of KBW oh, yeah. is Paul Wall versus the bulldozer. Yeah. So much so that I didn't think it got as many views as it needed to that no. I went and made a highlight tape of it. So there's a <laughs> highlight tape on the KBW channel just like, hey, y'all didn't pay enough attention to this match. Here's, like, a three-minute version of it so y'all can see how awesome this fucking match is right and then the finish is like one of my proudest finishes that i've ever come up with in my life no doubt match, right no it's doubt a last it. man standing match right they are they are all getting up you hit bulldozer he gets up he hits paul Wallbomb where you jump up he catches you you get up right y'all hit all these giant ass moves on each other every big move that you got and this, y'all still get up. And so what do you say? Okay, well, I go back to Old Faithful. I haven't done it in about a year. I'm going to flip the trampoline on top of this big behemoth, right? He's getting up. You freaking push it all the way over. It comes falling on top of him. He catches it. Oh, my God. Paul Wall so strong that he called the trampoline. But what is Borderlands? Oh, hell no. You're not going to stop my tr- trampoline flip. So he goes around the trampoline, hits him with a spear, 
Trampoline falls on both men. Holy shit. <laughs> what happens now? We've never seen this before. All the way to 10. We count it. Last man, they both out. He did this last year, Bloodthirsty. He flipped the trampoline on all of his opponents. Could he do it to Paul Wall? This is a signature from the bulldozer. We've seen him do it before. It's been a whole year. He's got it up. This will it's end, vertical. This will end a man's career. Paul Wall's done for. He's not getting up in this one. Oh, my God. He's got it. He caught it. He's got it up. How is he doing this? The street. And a spear. And Oh, my God. Oh, my. The ring just fell on top of both men. Both men are down. Both men. That was supposed to be the number one contenders match for the next champion, right? Who gets the next championship shot? That happens. Oh, my God. Like, what a finish. Yeah, what was. a finish to a match, bro. I, I implore everyone, if you have not seen that last man standing match, pause this, go watch it now, <laughs> then come back to this fucking podcast. Because it's unbelievable. I'm so happy. I love that match. Like I said, I feel like right then is when we were hitting the peak of KBW with so many top guys that we could use and we never got to really capitalize on that fatal four-way of yeah. us. Us That that match would have been fire. The things oh, I could have come up with oh. after we did the triple threat, right? After we did the triple threat match of me, you, and, and, and AK and how many cool things we come up with in that match. And then to see you and Paul Wall's chemistry in that last man standing... I was just like, in my head, I'm like, oh my God, we can make this so fucking good. I had so many ideas of like, how can Paul Wall's strength get shown off? How can I do this? How can I do that? Like, oh man, we should have run that forward. Yeah. God, I'm just oh, so, yeah, that's, if we had a time is, machine. That is probably my biggest regret at KBW is not being able to do that Fatal 4-Way. Because yeah. I'm with you. I was, I was so pumped. I was like, my God, you got AK, you got Cage, you got me. Now you got Paul Wall. Like, we had a great triple threat match. We're going to even have a better Fatal 4-Way match. Yeah. Absolutely. And, like, again, one of the questions <clears throat> at the end of the pod that someone asked is your biggest regrets. But I'm going to save mine for then. But I agree, man. What? Ugh. You know, hindsight but, is yeah, the 2020. 2020 always, yeah. you know. If yeah. I only knew then what I know now, right? Uh, but, uh, but before we pivot off Paul Wall, I do want to talk about, you know, back to our rivalry. I think the build up was was great. Like uh, the arm wrestling match, that was hilarious. I mean, yes, that was great. Like, you know, Fuck, bro! <laughs> How do we not talk about the arm wrestling match? God, one of the best segments that we've ever done in KBW, and I wasn't involved at all. I didn't even know what happened. They planned all this without me. Yeah, I believe so. I think I filmed it. I think I might have filmed it, but I was just they had planned all this by themselves, talking about it, and I think I added a little things about the the water spit or like what. Uh, the redneck referee says in the middle of <laughs> shit. But my God, what a segment. Yeah. I got to put in a little bit of... Pe it's like Bulldozer for the first time got to show how funny he was in KBW with this arm wrestling. I, I, I'm not ready. I'm not ready. It's like, you hear Paul, come on. What are you doing? Come on. Come on. With that, with that deep voice. Oh, and, uh, I remember God. one of the comments on that, on that uh, skit was like, the ref was right there. He saw the bulldozer spit the water in his face, and he didn't say anything. <laughs> what did he say? In the video, he says, oh, I didn't see nothing. I didn't see. He's like, he says something like that where he doesn't give. Oh, my God. Yo. Did. But, did. again, if I, we jump, we, like I said, we jumped ahead to the Paul Wall food because it is phenomenal. But we should talk a little bit about the, uh, the second match you and the Bama Kid had. The Team KBW qualifying match. What I think maybe is your best showing ever in KBW uh, up until that point, right? Because you hadn't had the triple threat with us yet. You hadn't had the Paul Wall match yet. I would just remember being so proud of the match. Like you said, we said oh, this yeah. on a podcast a while back. It's just like your parents were outside and they had a bunch of friends over. Your brothers were there. And like they were watching us just like go ham in this match. And like again, I, we, we recently rewatched the Career versus Street match, but I have not rewatched that qualifier. And I definitely think. It holds up, and I need to rewatch oh, yeah. it. Oh no, it definitely um, holds up. I rewatched it as well. Um, and again, I think it goes back to that mindset you always had of, well, how can we go even bigger and better? And uh, you know, I think in a lot of points of that match we did. It's kind of like the the uh, swing shot, you know, uh, in the first career versus street match, we did it, but in the second match we did it even better. Like, like I, I, we talked about, you talking about this the sliced bread. Was it? What, which one are you talking about? The sliced no, bread? Like, where you I... jump, 
when you jumped off the swing and I caught you. Oh, the swing spot. Yeah, yeah, yeah where yeah, I jumped yeah. off of the swing. Yeah, absolutely. And then, and then I wish I still had that picture. Uh, you know, I think I got it. Took. I think I got it. Oh, man. And, and it was just like, it might be If I have it, it'll now. be on the screen right now. It might be terrible quality now, but at the time, nah, the it was like still so, so cool, bro. It was like, just you coming off midair and I'll catch you. I look so high up in the air, too. Yeah. And like, <laughs> but, man, I definitely pushed you. And like that is where we debut the package pile driver. Or maybe it's not, but I remember that's one of the first times we hit it in the match, for sure. Um, which, again, you said you saw Kevin Owens do it, and that's the reason yeah. you, we yeah. wanted to try it. No like doubt. you said, hey, I saw this thing on the Indies, and I was like, oh, I already watched Ring of Honor. I know exactly yeah. what you're talking about. And so we do that. Um, and then, like, again, in the first River Street match, that leads to AK getting involved in y'all's match. Then we have a sink or swim match, yeah. <laughs> which we really don't talk about because, again, I can't remember hardly any of the yeah. stuff that happened in that match. But I do remember that was one of y'all's final singles matches together was the sink or swim match, right? Yeah. Where AK gets tossed in the pool again. He gets tossed in the pool at the end of the career versus streak. Then he gets tossed in the pool again. Uh, again, I thought a match I thought was going to do better in views, but Sinker Swim match did not do as well. Yeah, as it, 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 was it, it did not, but I thought it was like, it, it's one of my more funner matches I remember. Yeah, like, absolutely. Like I said, AK kind of kind of come up with that idea, and we were like, let's do a whole match about it. And it's just a, a, fun, a fun match, man. And then, like you said, it didn't get enough love. Agreed. Um... AK, do you have any fun memories of wrestling the Bulldozer? Is there anything specific you remember that you mm. want to bring up? I mean... Besides beating the shit out of him. <laughs> I mean, obviously, yeah. I, mean, I did hit Dozer with so many weapons. He hated it. He, he's like... He knew every time he fought me, that old guy, I'm going to get messed up in his mouth. Oh, no. <laughs> We're, but also, actually, because he was so big, we acted like he had more cushion. Like, he could take more pain than anybody else. Yeah. So we all <laughs> laid it in harder on the bulldozer. Well, we're actually forgetting a match, Cage. You're forgetting me and AK's that last single match was actually the one we recorded with the open challenge. Oh, yeah. I did. But that's later <laughs> on, KVW, for yeah. sure. Yeah. That is funny, though. I did forget about that. Um, and yeah. again, that was that was a by me and AK. Yeah. You know, he was trying to get subs to his YouTube channel, his gaming channel. And uh, it's just hilarious. I thought it was a pretty good match, especially to be playing without Cage. Yeah. And then, but it's just hilarious that we just didn't tell him about it. No. And just we uploaded just, it to the channel. Just uploaded it to the channel. He's like, what, what the, the hell? hell? <laughs> this is awesome. I was like, I would have commentated it, though, if you would have just told me. I'm glad that y'all wanted to do stuff without me yeah. when I was in Oklahoma. But I just wish. Yeah, but the big um, thing was we just wanted to surprise you. It was like we just wanted the shock factor yeah. of him not hell yeah. just not yeah, knowing yeah. at all. It definitely so it shocked the hell out of me when y'all did that. This is later on after KBW stopped uploading regularly on yeah. Sundays like we used to. Uh, but for sure, I did forget about that match. Right? And then, like I said, you have that team qualifier where you you get your win back, really. Mm-hmm. Right? I think that was a lot of the KBW qualifiers was that. Like, I got my – Cage got his win back over Pac-Man in the qualifier. Bulldozer got his win back over Bamba Kid in the qualifier. Um uh, and again, I just think like every time we wrestled each other, the chemistry just got better and better and better. And I think the same thing with you and AK. Every time yeah. you and AK, it's like, again, we were all hitting our stride of like how good we could pop really be. And then it just all ended really way too prematurely, I think. Um, and like we said, you know, Dozer, he's such a funny guy. Like, that's one of my favorite time. I always love wrestling him because like, he just make jokes throughout the whole entire process. <laughs> and then we'll get it. Like, oh, man. Then during the matches we'll talk shit and like sometimes like I just we just break character because how funny it comes out is like bro this is speaking of which I think we're ten episodes deep I think it's time to tell the story of one of everybody's favorite backstage moments oh, ever yes <laughs> okay, I was wondering so, if you were gonna save it to Paul Wall or if you no to it's time episode. it's it's time <laughs> I mean I, Paul doesn't know anything about it so I definitely will reveal it when Paul gets here yeah. But it's time to do it, right? So, yes. for Bloodthirsty, for Bloodthirsty, right? We we had already filmed all the matches for Bloodthirsty, right? We've done them all. Paul versus Bulldozer, AK versus Cage in a leather strap match. But I was like, I like to put promos at the beginning of the videos. Right. So we had to film the promos inside of Dutt's... Uh, uh, shed. What do you call it? Game Shed? Yeah, whatever. She shed. Yeah. You know, it's, it's the room. Shed. 
<laughs> it's the room that we filmed the first KBW podcast. So the arm wrestling matches. And, uh, and it's where the arm wrestling match is at. But in that, at that time, I was uh, I was deep in my religious phase, I would say, which is why this becomes such a fun thing, <laughs> right? But Bulldozer being the prankster, it's like late at night. It's like 6, 7, 8 o'clock at night sometimes. I'm trying to film all these promos so I can upload them and put them at the beginning of our thing. So AK cuts his... Well, no, Bulldozer cuts his promo, right? But he keeps making jokes beforehand. <laughs> and so, like, I say, three, two, one, action. And he's like, you know what? Fuck Paul Wall. And I'm like, dude, you can't say fuck. <laughs> what are you doing, right? And so, and, like, I, I, I laugh at the first time. I brush it off. It's funny. Okay. We do it again. He does it again. <laughs> Fuck, Paul. And I'm just like, bro. All right, for real, dog. Cut the promo. I need the promo. Right? So he finally, he cuts the promo. All right, AK's time to do a promo. AK comes up there. He gets in. You know, he's doing his heel thing. He does his shoulder thing. You know, he does his thing. He gets in there. He looks at the camera. He goes, Fuck, bro. I'm like, oh my god. These two, they die laughing. They just die laughing, right? And I'm just like, what are we doing? You know we can't say the F word in these, why are y'all? They're literally just doing it to make each other laugh at this point. Because yeah. they know I'm getting frustrated. I'm getting so frustrated. Because I just want to knock this out, right? Right, so then AK finally cuts his promo, right? And so then it's my turn to cut my promo you know, again, very deeply religious at this time. I put on... AK had hit me in the leather strap match with that with that ladder. And so I had a big bruise above my eyebrow. So I kept my hood on the whole time yeah. during this to cover up my eye while I cut this promo. But to everybody's <laughs> surprise, <laughs> Bordoza said, three, two, one, action. And I looked down. And I look up, and I say, fuck, Paul <laughs> And the place loses it, bro. They all, d I did not curse at this time. I made it my duty not to curse. Yes. And so for me to use the F word at this time shocked everybody. Bro, we died, bro. That's probably the hardest laughter I think I ever had in my life. I still have the footage, I believe. And if so, I'll play it right here. Just to, I don't know, maybe oh, not. Yeah. Maybe I don't have it. But God, I hope I do have it. Just to play it. It was just proves how fun it was. I mean, I'm still dying to this day. This day, yeah, bro. It was so good. I was like, I was like, man, if there was ever a time to curse, it would be right now just to make these dudes die laughing. Yeah. And it worked. Great comedic timing because we was not expecting that. Because, like, that's the whole thing. My, why all. me and Bulldozer were doing this is because, you know. Just to annoy me because he, he knows that I didn't like it. Yeah, he, we knew he hated cursing. And, like, he's like, he was, like, so strict about it. It's like, he, you know, he didn't want to curse. He was very religious at the time. You know, super Christian, goes to church every Sunday. Oh, the, the whole nine yards, you know. You know, he was doing good for himself, you know, making sure he stayed on the right path. And he, he wanted to, you know, all that stuff. But me and Dozer, we know we just we didn't give a, we didn't care. It was like we were cuss. They liked messing with me. <laughs> yeah, we, they liked messing with me. Yeah, them. so like we'll we'll do all these shenanigans and to again, piss them off to get him get him riled up. You and y'all have to you have to understand this happens so much during KBW. I'd be so dead focused on trying to get the right footage, and y'all would mess something up <laughs> or crack up laughing <laughs> or do a practical joke, and I'd just be like, "Come on, can we not just film this and get this done with?" Let's see this, right? Mess. That's one of my favorite memories too, and, and you know, looking back on it is so funny because people don't know how how serious you were like about getting the match done and stuff. And I just remember a lot of times before we record, we'd just be messing around and it, it would just frustrate so bad. Like, come so on, much, guys, bro. it's gonna get so dark. Are y'all gonna have to leave? Or like, we're not gonna be able to get the footage I need for all of everybody. Why don't we have everybody here? Let's knock it out. So that's why it was such a good flip on the joke because like. Bulldozer said it to mess with me the first time, his laugh, second time, knows it frustrates me. AK, then to pop Bulldozer, <laughs> says it because he knows it's going to make me frustrated. <laughs> then when I do it, to flip the script, nobody expects it. The room loses their mind <laughs> just because it was such good timing Bro. of it all. Yeah. And just unexpected, man, complete shock. Oh, man. And then uh, another, another uh, funny promo. Well, it's not nearly as funny as the Paul Wall thing. It's got to be the funniest ever, but... Uh, the Korean versus Street match at the Pro Bowl at the beginning, you know, uh, when it's me and you, 
and I'm coming out my room. Like we did so many takes of that because like he would knock <laughs> on he would knock on the door and be like, Hey Dozen, I come I think I come out one time with like a giant teddy bear and was like, Yes <laughs> <laughs> And then like I got him so frustrated that last time he knocked he was like, Hey Dozen and I come out with like my shotgun. And he's like, hey, what the heck? <laughs> and he it's so funny because he cocked it. It's like <laughs> she was like <laughs> <laughs> Bro, he had a gun. He had a shotgun, a rifle. Freaking, it was crazy. Like he just loved to mess with me in that sense. But he's so lovable that you can't be mad, right? However, I would be mad because boy, those can do that and get the joke out of the way and then do what we need to do. Other people can't. Yeah. And no. so, like, he would get other people riled up and cracking jokes, and then we never get anything filmed or done. And it was just. God, but that was funny when you come out with a shotgun. My goodness, what a pop. What a pop. Oh, yeah, I know there were a couple days. I know there was at least one day, I remember, um, we were running through mat- a match or a couple matches maybe, and, and we were just cutting up so bad that we didn't even wind up recording that day. We had to come back another day to record what we had what we went over. I agree. I mean, that happened a bunch where we had to come back. Like We'd, we'd get together on a Saturday, and then i need people on a Sunday to, yeah. to come back just so we could finish it. <laughs> Over and over again. Um, but if you guys don't mind, unless you got anything else on the bulldozer, I want to talk about I do want to just, yeah, I just want to talk about your growth overall. Like I said, if you go back and watch that Paul Wall match, just the, the growth that you guys had, how you overcome so many of your old fears, right? I remember, you know, you jumping up to get to the bulldozer, to get Paul Wall bombed was even something you were scared of. Over mm-hmm. time, you just got over a bunch of those fears. Like, um... And, and I really do think, like, people don't know this, but, like, you did come and train with us for a little bit of time. Mm-hmm. And those you know, were great you, memories, man. Yeah, like, you came, like, me and AK were training. We trained for three months together to eventually have our first pro pro matches, like, in the ring. And you come and, hung, and like, did, like, three or four training sessions with us and, like, yeah. learned how to wrestle a little bit. And I really do think you would have made a good wrestler if you would have stuck with it. You know, life has different paths for everybody, so I understand. But that's why I say to this day, even if we got to ring up to, tomorrow, I could put something together with you because you're fearless, you're a quick learner, and, like, you love wrestling so much that you've seen enough that we can make something happen, even if we, you know, that's why the goal is to eventually get enough members and enough money saved up to where we can do a reunion show so you can probably run back that Bama Kid versus Bulldozer rivalry one more mm-hmm. time. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I but, think we uh, get to questions now, right? Yeah. No, no. Well, actually, I, w- I want to talk Ooh. about. Uh, you know, I feel like it's not a whole episode worthy, but I want to talk about you know my other fa- favorite part of KBW, which was being Justin Williams. I mean, oh, yeah. you oh hell yeah! Know, if you didn't know, uh, if you haven't listened to previous podcasts, I was uh, the commentator Justin Williams, and then, and honestly, I mean. It was one of my favorite parts of KBW. I loved uh I think Cage just got comfortable enough with me holding the camera recording and, and commentating that that you know he pretty much made me the main guy when I could be. Um and I, I loved just you know, envisioning my inner J R or, or or whatever and and trying to, you know, just excite the match and and a lot of fans I, I you know i read a lot of comments throughout the years you know they love justin Williams, and i appreciate all the support because i was never i think i was more secure with my bulldozer character than i was with justin williamson actually because i was like man did i did i mess up am i doing a good job but the fans seemed to always always love me the voice of kbw absolutely no doubt the voice of kbw and like i said some people didn't even know until of you know episode two of the podcast that you were Justin Williams, which goes goes to show how well you did at differentiating yourself <laughs> mm-hmm. between the two people. Uh, and like Justin Williamson, again, I didn't trust anybody to hold the camera as much as I trusted you. If you look at the react last week, fucking AK's finger got in the goddamn camera lens <laughs> six times, yeah. right? So it's like I I could trust you more to get the shot, and like. Okay, well, if you're going to be the main cameraman, you might as well be the main commentator, and you were. And then, like, even then, when we did get the editing software and did start, I was like, I'm not going to just be the commentator. I need to my be alongside the voice of KBW and Justin Williamson. Um, and I was and like, he, there was little things I would get frustrated with, but I could correct you or help you out and right. lead the way. 
it was as long as we were commentating together. And I right. enjoyed commentating with you. That become another fun thing. Oh, yeah. It's like, okay, well, see, we all film the matches on a Saturday, but anytime on a Monday or a Tuesday, I can come over to your house and we can just sit there exactly. and voice over the commentary. And, and I don't know if you think about it, but again, when I think about KBW memories, I just think about you and even maybe AK coming to my house, going to the shed, on a laptop, commentating over the videos. And I, I mean, that's just some of my fondest memories, man. I loved it. Absolutely. Without a doubt. Um, yeah, yeah. And then, again, I want to say this, too, though. You know, I, I did appreciate you joining me as Mike Dr. Goodman. I think it, it made the commentary even better. Uh, but people have to realize, you know, yeah, yeah, we messed up. AK messed up some, but, you know, calling a match on the fly while holding Not the easy, bro. <laughs> Not that easy. That shit is difficult. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That is so difficult. People really don't understand how difficult it is to do play-by-play -play and color commentary on wrestling matches. Having yeah. to remember the moves, remember the names, know what the story direction is going, how to promote things on the fly. Get it's the like, shots. And get the shots because we're also <laughs> filming it. Right? Yeah. So it's like a whole different uh, beast of a thing of trying to do that. So especially commentate live. It's so much easier when we got the voiceover to do it because then we can but like doing it live which that was Justin Weems' main job was to do it live for the most part uh, it's not easy and to get the story across and remember move names and remember people's uh, wrestling names it, you know I think for like I said being 16, 17, 18 year old kids really y'all were only 16, 17 at the time I was the only one to ever turn 18 maybe Paul Wall too um, that you know y'all did a great job for 16, 17 year olds absolutely and I'm proud. I'm very proud. Like I said, I'm, I'm extremely proud of KBW. It's one of my proudest accomplishments ever in my life. You know, probably past my kids and then getting signed to AEW. That would be the next thing that I'm the most proud of is KBW in my life. Um, well, no doubt. Now, I'm, I, you know, to wrap it up, I'm extremely proud of my character. Um, I'm extremely proud of everything you, you helped me do in KBW. Um, I do want to point out that promo after you did turn on me at the Team KBW Qualify. You know, we go to AK's house. We all explain ourselves in three different, you know, promos. I do want to shout that one out of, like, you, like, I'm no longer in Cage's shadow. I'm no longer, I am, I am, I am my own man. I am better than, I don't, I never needed Cage. You know, Cage needed me. Like, I love that promo, and I just want to point that one out as well. It's one of my favorite oh, yeah. bulldozer promos that you cut. Yeah, no doubt. That might have been peak promo. Um. I remember a promo. I don't know. I have to go back. Maybe we can talk about it on another pod. But I remember a promo I cut. Uh, maybe it was about Paul Wall or something. I, I remember I was in the ring at my house, and I cut it. And I just remember after and watching it back I, at the time, I was like, "Man, that was really good for me." Mm -hmm. Like, uh, like comparing it to like earlier stuff. It might have been that one. It could have been, you know, like I said, me, you, Cage versus Budos. I had the number one contenders match on Christmas Day. Which AK interrupted to call to set up the triple threat, and I think you might have cut one on that one yeah. as well. But again, I'd have to go back and uh, and look it up. But I, we do have some questions I want to get answered. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Uh, speaking of which, like I said, there is the Discord in the uh, description below that you can join our Discord. Well, you know we'll be talking and hanging out with people in there. Anybody can join the general chat, but to be in the exclusive chats, only certain members will get access to certain channels in the Discord. So. Uh, one of the questions answered. Do you want to, AK, do you want to ask that question in the Discord? Uh, the Discord question? Yes. We can start with that one. Yeah. And then um, we'll go to the uh, member, sh member only post on YouTube. Yeah, this question is from uh, DJ Murda. He says, question for you guys. Is there a signature slash finishing move that someone else did that you wish you added to your move set? I mean, I think I'll answer this first just because, like, I created so many people's <clears throat> finishing moves in KBW. Mm -hmm. um, and so, like, there's some moves I definitely think, oh, man, I could have done that really well. Or just, like, there are some moves that I like, almost exclusively had for Bama Kid that I wish I could have done as Cage. Do you get what I'm saying? Right. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm trying to think, is there any move specifically that I can think of. Um, I don't know. I don't know. I pretty much like the moves that... Maybe the Awesome Knockout, man. The Awesome Knockout is so fucking cool. God, I wish I, cool. Maybe I would have saved it for me. 
Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, yeah. it's like a cold red or Yoshi tonic is what some people it, call it. In these I mean, it's played out red. now, but there, at the time it was awesome. Yes. <laughs> It was oh, not. Yeah. It was awesome. only really done by uh, by Amazing Red and TNA at the time. Yeah, you know, but it's definitely everybody does it now. Um, what about you, Aiken? Do you have any moves that you can think of that you wish you uh, that you liked or you wish you would have done that you didn't? Definitely bulldozer with the trampoline. I wish I could do that. <laughs> <laughs> Just pull the trampoline, Just push the trampoline I, on everybody. I, I just feel like, no offense, I feel like it would have been less menacing with you doing it. Yes. It's <laughs> and then just like the moonsault off the trampoline, dog. Like, Major Brown came back and was just busting it out no problem. Like, I could only do it off the silver railing. Yeah. I couldn't do it jumping. I couldn't do it. I couldn't jump and on the trampoline and then, like, jump off and then turn my body and backflip like Major Brown would do. That's... I could only jump up on the silver rail and backflip. Eventually, I learned how to do it like Major Brown did it. But I didn't do it as often. It really, it always, there was a little competitive part of me that would hate when someone else could do something more athletic than me. And like Major Brown was fearless in that way that he did do some wild shit <laughs> uh, that I was very jealous of. Yeah, I was going to say that is just being more athletic. Cause like, I wish I could do the backflips and the 450s and stuff like that. I just, I never had that uh, gymnastic uh, background where I, I can uh, do those things, but I just my I'm this awkward guy. Like uh, my my body type, and I'm just I wasn't I didn't have that that uh, that athletic super athletic gene that uh, Cage and um, Major Brown had. So I had to you know figure out my own way. But yeah, I wish I could do all the moon salts and the four fifties, and that would be awesome if I can add that to my move set. However, you did add some flips into your arsenal eventually. Like like you did you had. Today, you could flip off the top rope easily, I feel like. No yeah, problem. I could do that. You'd be fine. Front flip, at least. You know, flip to the floor on a dive. Right. Or something of that nature. Um, what about you, Dozer? I mean, you we talked about the infamous super kick that you wish you yeah, could hit. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it would have probably looked more like a Rikishi <laughs> kick, but... Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, of course, I wish I could have done a, a nice uh, Sweet Chin Music super kick, but... You know, it kind of goes back to AK saying, you know, I, I'm not athletic like that. I got to work to my strengths. And, uh, you know, I, I love the Bulldozer. Great, great classic move. But I think, uh, you know, we added the Frasionator because I think we talked about it. And I was like, yeah, that's a cool move. Nobody really uses it anymore. Let, let's yeah. use it. And uh, so that was a cool move. And then the package power driver, that is probably, I wish I had used it more. We didn't get into it until later. I loved it so much when I seen Kevin Owens do it. I was like, man, this move is so cool. I got to do it. And uh, and then lastly, I'll say I regret execution tag team wise. I wish we could have stole the crucifixion move. I thought that was so cool. Oh, that move did. was dope. It <laughs> was so cool. Man. Which one are you talking about when you say crucifixion? Like when they hold him up? You yeah. Know? Yeah. And then drop him down into uh, a cutter or whatever? Yeah. Uh, Hell yeah, that would have been dope to do as execution. Uh, anybody else got any more moves before we move on to the next question? No, it does good for me. Mm-hmm. Uh, Ash Crimson asks, a question regarding the infamous Money in the Bank 2 spot. How did that conversation look like after the match, especially considering it was the Beast's debut? So definitely asking, <laughs> like, were you mad? Were you upset? Was there a conversation to be had? And like, Reading this question, I can't even really remember what was said after the match because I no. think we were so worried about the finish of that match being executed properly, you flipping the trampoline over onto everybody and cutting your promo real fast that, you know, I think once you... Re- I don't, I don't want to tell... You, you tell me what you remember from that day. No, I mean, I, was, I wasn't mad at the Beast at all. Again, I blame myself more than the Beast because I had the mentality of I need to sell this move. And um, so I wasn't mad at him, but I was scared. That was, that was the most scared I've been in KBW. And, you know, I seriously thought about, like, man, I could have died. And <laughs> I actually contemplated not doing KBW anymore because of that. Like Really? Well, yeah, like a day or two. And I was like, man, I don't, I don't know. Like, kind of, it scared me a lot. Yeah, like I said, we've talked about it a little bit. It's like when you landed on your neck, you looked immediately at me and... 
I'm like, are you okay? And you're just like, you're like, you're like trying to get your bearings together and you're like, your eyes wide open, mouth wide open. Oh my God, what the hell just happened? But we continue on with the match. But like, no, you didn't blame the beast. You did it. I think he checked on you after. Everybody checked on you mm. afterwards, really, because like, the, you almost, you know, you landed on your neck heavy at that time. And, uh, but like, you, you took it on the chin, you finished the match, you did the spot, you know, yep. and everything was all good afterwards. But that is a good question. Like, it was his debut, so you could have easily been like, but, uh, this dude doesn't at, know what he's doing. But after, like, your foot was out of position, yeah. you know? As yeah. we made sure he was all right. was your fault. He was all right. We look back and it's like, dude, but we glad you're all right, but we're glad it went this way because it looks so dope. It yeah. looks so dope! Yeah, it, got, it, it, it was... <laughs> It was one of the last moves in the KBW intro. Like, I put all the coolest moves at the end, yeah. and, like, that was one of the coolest ones because he l- landed on his neck. Yeah. Uh, Jason Holtby asked, if you had to choose one KBW wrestler that you never had a match w- with, who would it be and why? Like, if you could have a match with that you never had a match with, who would it be and why? Hmm. Hmm. I definitely would probably say... Um, I would probably say Pitbull one on one. I mean, we had one with the Bama Kid. We had a couple with the Bama Kid, but I think one on one with him could have. <laughs> I thought you was gonna say Bama Kid. Cage versus Pitbull. <laughs> I had a match with Bama <laughs> Kid. Though. Technically, I didn't have a match with the real Bama yeah. Kid, but I had it with Pac. You always say you want to clone Kid. yourself and like, have a bunch of views. Yes, that would have been so fun to do that. Um. Is there anybody else? I mean, me and Mick the Brick never had a... No, we did. We did do a gauntlet where I wrestled Mick the Brick. But I feel like me and... I feel like Mick the Brick was developing into a good... Yeah. Like, later on, if me and Mick the Brick could have had a good one-on-one, I think it would have been good. Um, and the Great Dane as well. I think the Great Dane and me could have done some, like I said, yeah. some dope stuff later on as well. Do I... Uh, correct me if I'm wrong. Do I have a singles match with Big Time Mike? You do not. I, I, think, I think I think mine will be Mike. will be big time Mike. The whole rivalry with big time Mike. Yeah, yeah that would have been I fire. Thought, I thought he was so. I cool don't even know if you got a multi man with big time. Do you have a multi man with big time Mike? Did y'all ever I touch think... each other besides Royal Rumble three that never got uploaded? I know. I know we talk shit back and forth a couple times mm. in promos and stuff. I feel like we were in a multi man. Uh, I don't think so. I don't think y'all ever touched each other. That's crazy. But definitely big time Mike. Then I wish. I could have had a whole rivalry big time. Like again, a guy that we're gonna get on this podcast eventually. I know he's been listening to some of the podcasts. I don't know if he's listened to every podcast, right. but big time, we definitely want you on the pod. I just think you're so part of like the end of KBW. That we have to wait and save you for a later episodes. Oh yeah, yeah. KBW pod, right? Um, but definitely in the next month or two, we'll have big time Mike on the podcast without a doubt. No doubt. Um, oh, and maybe maybe one more before AK maybe says his. I would like to have seen like a uh, kind of David Goliath thing with D-Man if had he stuck around more or, or we had time for it. I would love, love to arrive. Another match that. after you had come mm-hmm. into your own to be able to call it. Like I said, y'all had that mm-hmm. weird little singles match. It really wasn't nothing. It was a throwaway singles, really. But yeah, you and D-Man could have did some cool stuff without a doubt. And uh, for me, i say definitely uh, too quick for sure. <laughs> no, they can't man. wrestle a lot of people. It's crazy. He did. Yeah, I wrestled pretty much. I try to think. Did I, I, have I ever, I'm trying to think. Did me and Paul Wall have a one on one? I don't think so. Mm. I mean, y'all. I think it was only multi man. Yeah, y'all never had a one on one. I would love that to have a one on one with Paul. That would have been a great match. Me and Paul Wall going one on one. Without a doubt, I definitely think. I don't know if you and Big Time have a one on one match. One on one. Yeah, it might be all. Y'all multi-man. never did. I don't know. I think we y'all did do one on one, but maybe it's one of those we didn't upload. I don't know. I don't think y'all did. I think again on Roll Rumble three, y'all are one of the, some of the final guys in it. I maybe y'all to, did. What was the match? Was that the multi man one? When I remember him having me in the ankle lock at my house. I don't know if that was one on one. I think I was either. Y'all might have did a one on one, and that footage might be lost. Maybe that's one that we don't have. Um, for sure, though. I it, there's no one on YouTube of a one on one with YouTube mm-hmm. for sure. But yeah, um, I'm trying to think. I think that pretty much covers. I would like to see Pitbull versus versus yeah, Bulldozer yeah. as well. Well, I think y'all would. Well, had. actually, um, you know, I've never thought about. I mean, it would have been great a one on one, but a little little Easter egg for the the listeners. Um, 
me and me and Pitbull were pretty good friends. We still are to this day. And uh, we always joked around like, hey, we're going to form a tag, and it's going to be called the Pit Bulldozer. <laughs> we still joke about it to this day, like the That's greatest awesome. tag team that never was. Pit Bulldozer. Pit Bulldozer. That would have been awesome for him to turn heel and join you. That would have been dope. Yeah. That would have been dope. Oh, that's um, the thing, too. I don't know if it relates to a question, but I do wish I would have. Well, you said there's a regret question, right? Why not? There is. Uh, but first, I want to say, Brett asked, what booking plans did you guys have for the future that you ended up scrapping because KBW ended? Or better yet, just scrap booking plans in general. Mm-hmm. I remember Kay saying he was going to put the world title on Bulldozer and that fed a four-way that we never got with AK Dozer, Cage, and Paul Wall. But were there other plans for other titles and stars? Um, again, again, at this point, I just get, I feel like it gets into fantasy booking because the only real match we mm-hmm. had locked down was that four way. Yeah. Um, and I want to have but, a, a what if episode of the pod. There will know, be a what if episode. About. So, but Let's also start. eventually the plan was for Pac Man to win the world title by cashing in mm-hmm. his money in the bank. Yeah, that would have happened for sure. That's one I'll give you now. We'll do a whole what if episode of like fantasy booking stuff that we should have happened or would have happened. Yeah. Later on. Um, but it, I think... So, KBW goes on a little bit of a hiatus right after I go to college. Big time, Mike, out of nowhere, without telling us, becomes friends with the, some other backyard wrestlers up in North Carolina. <laughs> and he just drives to North Carolina, nine hours away, yeah. to wrestle these guys in this crossover match with other backyard wrestling spots. That man I so didn't dedicated. know... How much, how dedicated he was in that match. He uses all kind of crazy weapons. I don't know how crazy this man. I was like, we didn't get this big time, Mike. No. I wish we would have got this big time back <laughs> in KBW. So when KBW came back, I was like, hey, if you're gonna be this dedicated, I'm gonna give you a bigger spot in KBW. Some fans didn't like that because they didn't know why we were randomly pushing it. But he was the most dedicated, and he didn't get Plus. to have a legitimate no. KBW run. This man was driving an hour just to get to us, yeah, uh, and wrestle with us. He was. Take, putting himself through tables and tacks and, you know, bleeding like a, a madman. And I thought, man, this dude deserves to get more. So definitely would have done more with Big Time Mike as well. But I didn't yeah. even know that he was like that crazy until I watched this all this crossover stuff happen. <laughs> and um, again, uh, you know, if you – I've seen a lot of people, and I don't know if it's still to this day, but back then didn't like Big Time, man. And I just want to again reiterate how dedicated he was. I mean – and I wish we would have had him sooner. Season two, season three, KB. Why do you, I mean, absolutely. I think they just didn't like the hot shot booking of it. Is that um, why you think that is? It definitely was. You, I think, yeah, they didn't like how fast we pushed him to the top. Right? Like, two matches back into the final season, he beats me for the title. And I don't think people, people are like, what? He, these, the guy, he wasn't involved in the AK versus Cage storyline. What? It was literally just because we hot shotted him to the top. Yeah. If we would have built a more organic story, I think we could have got him over in a better way, uh, without a doubt. Because um, me, all of us, we like, man, we thought Big Time was great at promos, but maybe that's just us. Maybe, yeah. I don't know. Maybe a lot of people didn't I like just, it. Again, a lot of this he cut on his own channel mm. or on other people's channels, so people didn't even get to see how mm. good of a promo he really was on our channel. Yeah. And like I said, the older he got, the better he got at promos. So, like, we're paying attention to all of this, but maybe not all of the KBW fans are paying attention to all of this. Right, yeah. And so, like... I didn't do a good enough job in the final five episodes to really put over how awesome Big Time was. Um, he was awesome. He was awesome. Yeah. Um, Rensler has a few questions, right? Ooh. First question is biggest regret. Mm. Bodozer talked about it earlier that his one of his biggest regrets that we didn't have to have that fair favorite foy again. One of my biggest regrets as well. Um... um I want another say, one um, of my biggest regrets is not having Pac Man win the world title because he definitely mm-hmm. should have. Yeah. Yeah. Um, one of my uh, biggest regret biggest regrets was um, not trying enough um, devastating like uh, crazy bumps like Cage did. I wish I like if I can take myself now, I would have done a lot more stuff in KBW, like a lot more crazy bumps. I would have took a lot more things. In hindsight, you know, I wish I. I, I it was so rare. I don't think AK maybe got ever got put through a table. AK never, yeah. you know what I'm saying, got, took any real crazy bumps on the ground. And, like, now he's much a tougher person. Like, he right. likes to do more crazy. Like, we even did a a match at a crossover event where we I, I got put 
through a table on top of him, or he got put through a table on top of me. Yeah. It was crazy. I got I, and so it's like, I got a lot tougher as I got over older, but at the time when I was younger, I wish I was that. I wish I was. I, I wish I was tough at that age, like you know, like a D man or Major Brown, Cage. These guys who had fearless in them, like Pac Man, they were fearless, and I. I was not fearless. I I am the epitome of fear. Like I hate. I'm like, oh god. This yeah. is, I was like, no, this is too much, guys. I'm like, I'm so I was so scared. Of, like I was like, can't do that. I I might die. I was like, I was, I was very dramatic about it, right? I was like, yeah, I can't do this. And but I wish I wasn't in that mindset. I wish I had a better mindset and better. Like I wish I was more fearless when I was younger. Like Cage and D Man. Another regret is just like the whole booking of the leather strap match into the rematch the next day. He's yeah. just like, I like, I was really just trying to get the belt onto me because I felt like I needed the belt at that time when really I, I did it, but neither AK, we needed it to get it off AK. Mm. AK was dead set on, oh, I put you over last year, so you got to put me over this year, <laughs> the type of thing. And it makes sense. It's just, I had already, like, we should have took the belt off of. Of you at Blood, Sweat, and Tears, so then me and you could run the match for the world. The, we still do a singles match, and mm-hmm. I could lose the, you know, if Bordeaux wins the belt in the triple threat, we can still do the same finish with him and Paul Wall in the last man standing. He keeps the belt, and then me and you, I could have put you over in a better way. I still don't. I didn't. It's weird because I felt like there needed to be a good guy win over the Renegades. Like, I, I, at one point, I needed to beat you. It seemed like you were winning everything. You won the four-way. You caused us to lose Team, team KBW. You won the triple threat match. You had beat Van Bakir. You had, you know, it's like, then you beat me again. And it's a leather strap match, so it's like, it's an ending type of feud. So the only way I could even lose in a legitimate way without being looking like a wuss is like getting choked out with the belts. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I was just like, ah. <laughs> I wish we didn't. I wish we would have done something different. Because then I just beat you in a less cool match that Wednesday after or that Sunday after the pay-per-view and it just didn't make sense to me, you know? Mm-hmm. We should have been smarter about how we booked that, but I was trying to get the belt back on me because I felt like the fans needed it on me at that time. Ugh. It was weird. Me and AK are much less selfish now. <laughs> so it could have been... We, yeah. we would have put the product we, first. We grew up, bro. We grew up. For we sure. had much more mature. Like, like, I mean, like we said a couple times, you know, I want... I didn't want to lose back then. I didn't want to. Uh, I wanted to win the world title more. But nowadays, man, I wouldn't care. I, I just want great matches, great rivalry. Like Ultimate Underdog should have won the tag titles, right? That's another yeah. regret. Like yeah. D Man and Maxilla definitely should have won. Maxilla wasn't as dedicated, but again, you know, something we could have worked out later on. Um, no, another I'll question. Tell you another, I, well, oh, I'll tell ahead, you another regret I wanted to mention, uh, and I think Renzo actually touched in it on his uh, career video about me. And again, it boils down back to time. We ran out of time. But yes. I would have loved to at one point turn babyface and mm-hmm. seen how that would have went. That would have been different. It would have. Been. I think it would have been a way of like, if you do it, you got to get execution back together, right? Where it's right. like, where it's like something happens, and either you get so down and out, like you're at the bottom, like you go on a losing streak or something like that, and like, I reach my hand back out. You don't. You say no. Then you see me getting jumped by guys that just beat you up, and you come and make the save, and right, and like you see us, like throw the eggs and you hug each other, and then like we go for the tag titles together as baby faces. Ooh, that would have been dope, right? That would have been dope. That's something, something dope. long term that we could have yeah. changed, right? But yeah, something we never really got to see was a baby face Bordos, besides the time you was just AK's lackey at the beginning of their career. Um, Rensler also asked, was there any other name considered besides the Bordozer? At that time, I just threw a name on. If he liked it, it happened. Like, did you uh, think? Of, can you remember any other name besides Bulldozer? I, I don't remember. I hate. Maybe I we thought remember. about calling. Uh, maybe we thought about calling him Dustin something else or something. I don't know. I don't. I remember. I had D-W. a couple of ideas. I wish I remembered them. <laughs> uh, I remember I had a couple of ideas and and they just weren't weren't there. Um, and then I, you threw out the Bulldozer, and I was like, oh yeah. Which I'm glad we settled on. I think it worked out well. I do too. I, I can only imagine you now as the Bordos. Mm-hmm. I still get. I get called by people to this like <laughs> around here, around home. Like your dad always. He was the guy Your dad always. Oh, yeah, what? yeah. Like plenty of people. Like that's a nickname now for me. Is that's Bordos crazy. Or Doza. That's dope. Doza. Doza is what I like. Every time, I, I called you Doza a few. Videos. I think your dad does it just to pop me because that time I'm over there, he always called you Doza. <laughs> 
<laughs> hey, Doze. <laughs> Again, I love how much your dad is a fan of everything we did. Yeah, man. Uh, why was his finish name the same as his ring name? Listen, about two videos into him, his ring name, his finish name being the same, I hated it. I wish I could have changed. It's so confusing. The bulldozer hits the bulldozer. What? That doesn't make sense. Why did I do that? I don't know. I named it that because I didn't have a cooler name for the, the finisher at the time. Mm. Right? What could we have named it? What could we have named it? Construction that driver instead? or something. Ooh, something no, um, like yeah, that. Yeah, we could have named it something cool. The wrecking around. ball, something yeah, like yeah. that would have been cool. Drops the hammer. I don't know. So, ah, something like Ooh, that would have been. I do like the wrecking ball now that you said that. Damn. Wrecking ball would have been dope. Damn. He hits the wrecking ball, yeah. Something like that. Um, why was it, uh, Were there any fears of the trampoline breaking during matches? In parentheses, that last one wasn't meant to be a dig, I swear. A friend of mine is always worried about that back in the day. I think it's weird to say that the camera adds 10 pounds. But I think the camera does not do justice of how big our trampolines were actually. Yeah. Right? The trampoline mm-hmm. was wider than it looks on camera. It looks smaller on camera than it does. Uh, it makes us look bigger. The camera makes us look bigger than we are. It's like at that time, we're weighing 90, 110, 120 pounds at most. I think not probably me. Bulldozer at his <laughs> biggest was maybe pushing 300 pounds. But he was never like that big that... It, the weight of the, like, none of, like, us on the trampoline team. Now, listen, once we got older, when we tried to do Royal Rumble 3, yes, and we're yes. all oh, pushing God. 150, 170, 180, 200 pounds, 400 right. pounds, something like that, bro, that shit's crazy. The, ma- the amount of weight on at the end was later, crazy <laughs> later on. See, it was. But early I on, not too bad. I remember us, like, me, Pitbull, maybe Paul Wall, or somebody was all on there, and I was like, this trampoline's going to break. Thank God it was AKs, so we didn't have Speaking of which, one of the last <laughs> videos we filmed at my house, we were going to do the tag title match there. And y'all, I forget who goes for something on the board, though, because it's a three-way tag match. Execution, you and Jacob Storm versus Make the Break T-Rex versus TW and the Beast. We do like a double suplex or something to bulldozer and the trampoline breaks. Yeah. It bends. I still have that picture of how the frame is bent. I'll have to hopefully add it in here if I still got it. So like it did break one time. Like I said, once we got a little bit older or deeper into KVW, uh, and we ha- that's why in Royal Rumble 2 we had to get the neighbor's trampoline like we talked about with my dad last week, and bring it over because we had broke it. That's why the whole reason we went to make the Bricks house because it was like, oh my God, we just planned this whole video out. Where are we going to film it? He's like, I got a trampoline in my house and it's right down the street. Yeah. So we just drove over there and did the match over there for the tag titles, which is crazy to think about now. Um, that is funny. But no, we never really had a worry. We trusted the trampolines a lot of times because we'd been yeah. on it enough and it, it was very sturdy. It could handle the mm-hmm. wind. It wasn't until later on that we got worried about stuff like that. Yeah, my skinny ass never once thought the champion would break, so. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then Jax Allen has a can dozer talk about the time him and Paul Wall competed in the arm wrestling match. I remember that being a hilarious uh, segment. Oh, yeah. Damn, we already, oh, we already we kind of talked about that a little bit. Those. Then he says, also, can you ask him about his infamous line about a bunch of nobodies? In parentheses, right? <laughs> nobody, nobody. Me and one of my friends thought that, me and one of my friends thought that shit was elite back in the day. This is what <laughs> Jack Allen said. Listen, dog, again, me and Bulldogs are both would use that a ton. I don't know why, but we would call people nobody. Oh, he's a nobody. That dude's a nobody. Bunch of nobodies. <laughs> well, I think I think we were just trying to think of an insult because again, we didn't curse or anything. And so uh, we couldn't call you know people pieces of shit or anything like that. I did. So I was like, oh man, what what what, sound, what sounds uh what sounds make him sound like really worthless? Like he's a nobody, not even worth. But like also, that. not only that, it's like I think besides us three, who were the only ones that cared about KWW, the rest of these people in our mind were nobodies. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Sorry, T Rex, you were nobody. Sorry. This guy, you are nobody. Sorry, yeah. like in our head, they were nobody because we were the main three of the KBW. Right? Yeah, exactly, exactly. And and I, if you go back to some videos, some of the other guys kind of said it too. I remember like Mick the Brick, these bunch of nobodies. And I'm like, yep. what the hell? He was just taking. That each was other just a saying. saying <laughs> I think that was just a saying in in where we we're from back then. Like a lot of people call people nobodies. Right. Definitely was elite though. Definitely was elite. 
Uh, but that's pretty much all the questions we got this week. Again, if you ask the question, we're filming this on the uh, the Wednesday, the 14th, Valentine's Day. So if Happy you Valentine's ask the question, yep. yes. If you ask the question, we didn't get to it, we will answer it on next week's pod. Uh, and remember, I should have said this at the beginning, February 18th, we're doing a live stream this Sunday. Uh, we will be here on here about 2 to 3 o'clock uh, Eastern uh, and Central Time, going to react to the full all or nothing. Well, um, that's Hazard's debut in a four way. This pod will well be. As, yeah, this pod will be <laughs> after that. <laughs> yeah, after the live stream. Yeah, it'll be after the live stream. This will be up Tuesday. <laughs> 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 we left him speechless. He didn't know what to say. We broke Fuego Del Sol. We broke it. <laughs> I, was trying to remember, I was trying to remember what I said before. Like, where did I, how do I jump back and start? But I don't know where to even start. Oh, my God. <laughs> uh, remember, the KBW membership is up, right? Check it out. It's what makes this podcast happen. Uh, we had a great time talking about Bulldozer's career as well as answering your questions. Please ask us questions for the next week's pod, and we will see you next week on the KBW Podcast. Stick around for the credits to see all of our members. Thanks. Peace.